Hey everyone, welcome to Van Life Eats. Hi, so we had such great fun seeing all of the vans at Van Life Eats Big Picnic. We thought we'd better share our favorite ones with you. So here is part one. <laughs> so do you want to tell us a little bit about your van? Uh, I bought it in November as just a panel van. Um, it took me about five months to convert it. So you've done it. all the work yourself? But literally everything. The only thing I didn't do myself was put the awning up because it was too long for me to reach both yeah. ends and put it up on the brackets. But yeah, literally everything else I've done all on my own. And what's your favourite part of your van? Uh, the shower. It does look <laughs> that is a really a mean shower. <laughs> yeah. I do, I do a lot of scuba diving, so it's important, it's important for, for me to have a shower. So yeah. yeah, when I get out of the sea and just wash off and everything. Um, and then yeah, I've got the higher bed to have lots of storage in the back for keeping all my scuba gear and my bike and everything yeah. in there as well. Fab, fab. So yeah. What do you think was the hardest part of your van conversion? Um, I don't think there was any hard part. I'm the air conditioning engineer, so plumbing, gas, electrics, Quite used all to that doing sort of that thing. Anyway. I do it anyway for my job. Uh, the most nerve-wracking, I think, was cutting big holes in the side yeah, of the van to fit windows. Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Really scary. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think there was anything. There wasn't anything that really tested me too much. There was lots of late nights, lots of weekends, obviously doing it while I was working as yeah. well. So, oh, fantastic. But it's, uh, I'm really happy with the result and happy to be able to get out in it now and travel yeah, rather yeah, than it being a building site. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Well, yeah, yeah, we'll have a peek inside. Yeah. So what kind of things do you want to know? Um, did you do the conversion yourself? Yes, yeah we did it all ourselves and all together it took us probably about seven months. We did it for about a year but we lost motivation for about five months but then we got back into it and managed to get it all finished. Um, what else would you like to know? What's your favourite part of your van? Have you got a favourite feature? Oh, my favourite part is that corner. Yeah, it's really homey. That corner there, it? yeah. I love the decor in it. And then I love, oh, the projector. I love the projector. And you project across yeah, onto this it wall, Yeah, straight onto that wall. Um, we don't have a screen or anything, and it works really well, actually. Fantastic. So we love that. And where do the dogs go? Do they just sleep So the, floor, the dogs or? have a little, this whole bed at the front is all for the dogs. Oh, fantastic. And then they've got a little, um, we've got a plug that's all attached in with two little, um, leads so they can get plugged in while we're driving on their harnesses so that's their big area but then they do obviously still come in and sleep with us yeah. <laughs> and obviously we've got to talk about your little photo boards this is all the adventures that you guys have yeah, been on yeah that was um so far because we've only just finished the van yeah a lot of those are all from southeast asia Amazing. and some we did a bit of europe on the motorbike as well but what we will do eventually is take pictures while we're traveling in the van and then replace them all with van ones eventually oh fab and have it filled up with all the van adventures this is a really nice little spot here as well. You've got a little bit of extra storage. Yeah, we've got um, the table then comes off of there and the pole goes into the floor 
and that turns into the table area as well. We've also got more storage. And is this converts into your bed as well? So you can yeah. use it as the bed and then the table so during the, the day. The, we've got slats underneath here, the same as these ones. Yeah. And they just go straight across. Brilliant. And then these cushions come down to make one big bed. Yeah. And then we've got all our duvet and everything under here. And then we've got more storage in the door. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a bit hidden. Oh, that's lovely. We put a lot of the dog leads and all that sort of stuff in these little ones down here. And then um, we've got a little bit of decor in that one. But all the dog leads and that are all being used at the minute, but they normally fit perfectly in there. And then a little toilet, little kitchen roll holder up there. <laughs> and what was the most challenging part of your van build? Yeah, probably planning the layout in the beginning and trying to imagine it when nothing's there. Trying to imagine, um, trying to imagine how much space you'd have through walking through the middle was yeah. really difficult. And um, if that was going to take too much space up and everything, that was probably the hardest part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to decide how to lay everything out, especially with two dogs. Yeah, no, it's very, it's beautiful, really lovely, and you know the colours in there, perfect. Thank you. Um, so this was my lockdown project, so in November I started it, building it, finished in June. Um, so there's a couple of things that I really love. One is that I specifically picked a front wheel drive model, not the rear wheel drive, so I could I had this extra bit of space, whereas a lot of the rear wheel drives have the drive shaft going through and you have the step up. So this enabled me to build a fast floor. Um, so I've got shoe storage, a pantry, which I love. That's that such a great use of keeps, storage, it, isn't it? You wouldn't put anything yeah, else there. It keep, so. And it keeps the weight low down, and it means that I don't have a visually bulky um, upper cabinets, which things could roll around and fall out, bash you on the head, whatever. So that works really well. I've got a hidden shower tray and toiletry storage in there. Um, so they're they're like I haven't really seen how many other people do it. No, they do it in boats. They do it in boats, but I hadn't really seen it in um, in vans. I guess it's because of the headroom, but you still get six foot clearance I think under here actually so Fantastic. I'm not particularly tall but I wanted to build it such that other people could share it with me yeah so you get good clearance um, I also used multi-foil insulation rather than thick sellotex boards so I could like wrap it around the shape of the of the beams and the shape of the van so I could get like maximum you know use out of these spaces yeah and the shelf can sit on the top so I use the van's shape as much as possible to then balance ledges off and build these things off I set my lights on top of the on top on of the these caps um, and how long did it take you you said you started it in November yeah November finishing about June okay so it, was, it was my dad helped me but it was very much you know we didn't outsource any of it at all so. what was the, the hardest bit for you do you think <laughs> working through winter yeah <laughs> as silly as that sounds working through winter with freezing cold hands the, no heating the, in there the, and the long dark afternoons um, but the otherwise, otherwise it's electrics. Yeah. It's like a, I can visualise and I can, I can be, you know, really good with my hands. But like electrics is like a whole other language. Mm. So, 
And you were saying yeah. that you've used a lot of upcycled and yep. um, sort of new materials that you found. Yep, yep. So my, my table, my all my unit tops and my tabletop are all um, OSB boards that someone was giving away for free on Marketplace with just tipping, getting them, scrapping them. So I painted, painted them, sanded them back, varnished them, and they work so well as countertops. And then my door handles, again, they're not always super cheap, and because I tend to have quite a few door hand, um, sort of cupboard handles and things, they're just a little twig that I picked up on a walk so in some woods. And again, they've got the memories attached to them then as exactly. well. Exactly. And, and you know, that was super easy to do. Just trim them to the size I wanted, like paint the front face of them with a bit of humble, put a screw through the back and, and job Sorted. done. And then, and then similarly, my tiled splashback is just wallpaper samples, which cost absolutely nothing because it's just samples of wallpaper from, yeah. from home base. So varnish that and it works absolutely perfectly. So there's lots of little things like that. The, the foam They're for so these, pretty, these cushions are cot mattresses. From, okay. Again, people were giving them away on Marketplace because I guess they'd, they'd be happy to get a second-hand cot, but they didn't want a second-hand mattress. mattress. I don't mind if a baby's been on there for a couple of months. Yeah. Most of them have a waterproof coating anyway. But yeah. Take off. So that, and they're the perfect depth. Ten centimeters perfect. of foam works so well as a as a seat, as a bench bench cushion. So um, cost me nothing. There's lots of things like that that I was constantly looking out for a marketplace, setting alerts for myself so that I'd see them come up. And it's, up. it's getting those ideas, isn't it? Like to think yeah. to use those yeah, exactly. in that way. Exactly. Yeah, it's fantastic. The amount of people that have said they've never thought of using OSB for yeah. anything pretty, you know. Yeah. Um, and then all my offcuts I just used in the structure, so I've used it, you know, to create the false floor. Fantastic. There was nothing that really went to waste particularly. So, yeah, it worked. Um, Amazing. Worked so well. Yeah, it's very beautiful. I'm always amazed. It's only a medium wheelbase. It's not, you know, I can still fit in a parking bay at Sainsbury's. Like, yeah. the, I, I get a whole tiny home and I can still fit in a normal parking space. So, that always amazes me. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to Bluetti for providing us with this 2000 watt power bank. That's 40 amp hours, uh, complete with solar, solar charging panels. This thing has been a savior to us. Um, it's honestly, it's been so good. We've charged multiple mobile phones. We've charged all our radio walkie talkies. We've been inflating airbeds for people. Um, and on top of that, every single evening for several hours, we've had a, a big, great big work light powered. Um, and we managed to get from Thursday through till a Monday morning, we got our very last little bit of juice out of her. So that, that's a lot of use. So um, I, we massively recommend these.